Can you guys see me right now? I love each and every one of my brothers and sisters on this stage, man. And behind this camera, yo, man, these are my brothers and my sisters. You can't see all of them, but I love each and every one of these people, man. Oh my goodness. Yo, praise God, man. Praise God. Pastor Teresa, Pastor Carter, thank you for this opportunity just to speak. The title of my message today is Imperfect Rocks. Imperfect Rocks, I'm reading from 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. I'm reading from the NASB version. I honestly don't know what rendition it is. It's not the 95 and it's not the 2020. Hopefully it's a Bible, but I'm reading from uh, 1 Peter 2 verses 4 to 6. It says, And coming to him as to a living stone, rejected by men, but choice and precious in the sight of God. You also as living stones are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For this is contained in scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a choice stone, a precious cornerstone, and he who believes in him shall not be disappointed. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would just be with me right now, Lord. God, I pray, Lord God, for, for those that are online, my brother and my sister behind the screen, Lord. I pray that you would deliver this message to them with, with a protection, Lord, with a veil around it, God, that it would not be me speaking, Lord, but that it would be you, that you would empower me, Lord, that it would be your words, that I would step aside so that you can speak, Lord Jesus. Touch the service, Lord. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. In 1971, the world-renowned building project Finlandia Hall was brought to a completion in Helsinki, Finland. The architect, a man named Alvar Altu, was responsible for the design and for the exterior of the building. He chose a nice, polished Carrera white marble panels for the exterior stone cladding. Well, 10 years later, unbeknownst to him, unfortunately, the entire building would require a costly $3 million makeover. Um, after discovering a defect in the Carrera white marble panels that deforms them to an unrepairable state. They're like, they, they, they have a concave um, structure and the wall, you know, it was flat and all of a sudden there's, there's a bunch of bumps. What he didn't know was that Carrera white marble when exposed to large temperature variation can suffer from the effects of thermal hysteresis deforming the stone into an incurable disc-like shape. Because of this, um, architects since then have decided against using this stone and, and, and they do a little bit more testing and, and more thorough research into stones and they look for stones with the least amount of defective qualities as possible when they're building. In verse four, it says, and coming to him as to a living stone rejected by men. Why? would a man reject a stone? What would be his prerogative? What would be his motivation to reject a stone? Right, when, when, when a man is building a house, a man is looking for strong, polished, perfectly cut stones to build an appealing, stable structure with as little defect as possible. A man would reject a stone if it was defective, uncut, deformed, or imperfect. Now, here's what I want you to see. The stone that was rejected by men is choice and precious in the sight of God. I want to show you guys something about the character of God as an architect. Unlike our friend Alvar Altu, God looks for a different type of stone. There's a scripture in Exodus 20, 25, when, when God is commanding Moses um, the commandments, he says, if you make an altar of stone for me, you shall not build it of cut stones. For if you wield your tool on it, you will profane it. In Joshua 8, um, th th there's a moment he's on Mount Ebal and he builds an altar for God of uncut stones, which no iron tool has wielded upon. Um, as, as to not profane it according to the word of the law of Moses. And I want you guys to see something here that when God builds a structure, he does not choose the nice, perfectly cut stones. He chooses imperfect stones. It says you also as living stones. 
So we are also rejected by man and we are also choice and precious in the sight of God. We're being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood. When God is building a structure, he finds beauty in what man does not find beauty in. This house, I, I want you guys to recognize, this is more than likely not a pretty house. This house is an ugly house because when God is looking for stones, he's not looking for stones that are polished, well-rounded, nice looking, financially stable, drug-free, emotionally balanced, got their whole life together stones. That's not the stones that God chooses when he builds his house. The stones that God uses are imperfect, flawed, pathologically lying, clinically depressed, struggling with addictions. Life is in shambles, stones to build his house. We are those uncut stones. We are the imperfect rocks. All of us, the, the, there's nothing perfect about us. We, we are unpleasant to the eyes. We're rough around the edges. I am an imperfect rock. You guys understand this, but, but, but I'm, I'm a part of God's house. Because that's what he does. He, he looks for imperfect rocks to make something beautiful out of them. Alvao too, his house started off beautiful, and then it became ugly. God's house starts ugly, and then it becomes beautiful. Let's be real, right? Guys, I want you to know, whoever's online right now, I want you to know I'm imperfect. I'm flawed, okay? You guys have to know, I, I, I used to smoke myself to sleep every single night, man. I used to struggle. I, I didn't care about anybody around me. I was so consumed with myself. Uh, I, was, I was an awful person. I was taking any drug that you put into my hand, man. I was living a crazy lifestyle all about me, completely consumed by myself. Man, I objectified women and, 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 and took advantage of them in drunken stupors, man. I'm, I'm still struggling with pride. I'm still struggling with lust. I'm still struggling with insecurity, with judgment. I'm still learning to walk in the freedom from pornography. I, I, I'm an imperfect rock. I want you guys to know this. Th th there's nothing perfect about me, but I'm living because God lives inside of me. That's the difference. I'm, 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 I have life not because of me, but because Jesus is inside of me. I was an imperfect dead rock, and now I'm an imperfect living rock because of Jesus, because of Jesus. Guys, it says right here in verse six, and he who believes in him shall not be disappointed. I'm not, I, I was not disappointed. I was not disappointed. I placed my faith in the Lord. I'm an imperfect rock. We're all imperfect rocks. You're an imperfect rock. I'm just like you. I want you to know I'm just like you, but I placed my faith in God. He did not disappoint me. You're an imperfect rock in front of a bunch of imperfect rocks. That's what this is. Can I tell you guys a story about an imperfect rock who was in front of a bunch of imperfect rocks and his life changed forever? My dad, my dad's name is Peter. Just like the guy who wrote the, the, the book, Peter. Greek Petros, it means rock. My dad, Piero, he's Italian. Uh, rock, that's, that's his name. He's an imperfect rock. I want to tell you this. My dad was an imperfect rock. At 17 years old, he was addicted to crack. He was taking drugs. He was 90 pounds, skinny. His face looked like a like scream from uh, like a ghost man. Um, his principles ha had extreme concern of him. My, my grandparents, they were immigrants from Italy. They were working all the time. He would steal their car, drive up to New York City, get high on crack during the school days, come home. He was spending all of his friends' money, pawning his chains just to get some crack. He was an imperfect person. The, all of society have rejected him. He had been evangelized too, but he was continuing to live in himself. 17 years old, in the middle of his senior year, he was at his friend's house, Mike Bouquet, him and a couple of friends, uh, Todd, Alfie, Sean Bowen, and they're sitting down at this table and they're dividing up, distributing a bunch of crack rocks, a bunch of imperfectly sized rocks. <laughs> it would have been nice, right, if the dealer had factory pressed a bunch of nice, perfectly symmetrical cubes to make distribution easier. So they're trying to, you know, make sure everyone's getting their fair share. A bunch of oddly shaped, uh, imperfect rocks. And he's sitting there. And as he's distributing these rocks, his friend Mike Bouquet walks down the stairs. And he's walking and he's walking. And he, 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 he's, he's on edge. He's picking up little white specks on the ground. Dust. He's putting them in his palm. And he's peeking out the window blinds. 
He's walking around and he comes to the table and he says, hey guys, what about me? Don't I get some? My dad said in that moment right there, it was like the scales fell from his eyes. He said, what am I doing with myself? Is this my life? Is this what my life amounts to? That same day, my dad went home and called out to Jesus and said, if you're real, have my life. I have nothing to give you right now. But if you're real, come into my life. My dad has been 37 years sober. He has not touched a drug since. His life is completely changed around for the better. He married a beautiful wife. That's my mother. He had beautiful children. My dad's life is completely changed around. It's because he placed his faith. He believed in him who does not disappoint, who doesn't put you to shame. That's what it says. And he who believes in him shall not be disappointed. I wasn't disappointed. I cried out to God. I don't know why. I, I, I was sitting in this room one time. I had a girlfriend at the time. We were toxic. Eight to 10 years, I hadn't been praying, man. My dad, he, he raised me. He wanted to teach me the ways, but I didn't want God. I was living for myself. I heard about God. I knew about him. I didn't want him. I wanted to do what I wanted to do. I asked God if he could help me, give me clarity with my relationship, honestly. But God revealed himself to me. He's changed my life. For the better, I'm still an imperfect rock, but I'm alive because of Jesus. I want you guys to know this. And here's my question. My question for you behind that screen. What are the crack rocks? What are the rocks in your life that you need to put down in order to pick up the living rock? What are the rocks that were in front of you that you need to put away to grab the living stone, the cornerstone, cornerstone, a cornerstone is the first thing placed in the foundation. All of the measurements are taken from that point. When you get the cornerstone right, you get everything else right. That's what a cornerstone is. God is the cornerstone. What, what is it? Is it addiction? Is it drug addiction? He said, our sister Liz, free. he'll set you free. He said, my past for you, set me free. He'll set you free. Is it, is it, is it alcohol? Is it pornography? Is it, is it depression? Is it identity issues? Is it physical disabilities? Is it disbelief itself? Are you just struggling to believe that this stuff is real? What are the rocks that you need to put down? Pick up the rock that promises that he will not disappoint you. And, and you have to do this through prayer. You have to pray. I prayed, my dad prayed. You need to ask God. He's gonna answer you. This stuff doesn't matter. The worship the, the, the words, they don't matter. You need to invite God into your life because that's what it says. You have to understand we're all sinners. We're all imperfect rocks. I'm just like you. We're not sinners because we sin. We sin because we're sinners. It's our nature. We have a sinful nature. And God sent his son. He put this on Jesus Christ, Yeshua, salvation, Christ, the anointed one. He set him aside and he said, this is my son. He is your salvation. Believe what he says. Believe what he teaches. Look at what he does. He goes to your cross and he dies for your sins so that you don't have to be alive to them no more. You can be alive to him. And just in case you don't believe him because he didn't, there's no way he could have known that we have questions. He's no way that he could have foreknown that we'd be skeptic. He says, on the off chance that you don't believe him, I'm going to raise him from the dead three days later. I'm going to tell you beforehand, and then I'm going to do it so that you know that what he says is true. I put my faith in that man, and he has not disappointed me. He wants to do the same for you. You have to pray. If you've never prayed before, it's, it, it's talking to the Lord. It's, it's what I'm doing to you right now. It, it's talking. I'll do it with you. I, I want to invite you to pray. Your life is going to change. He doesn't disappoint you. He doesn't put you to shame. I'm going to pray with you. And then we'll close out, but um, just join me. Lord, Lord, we just, we thank you. Lord, I just stand with my brother and my sister behind that screen right now. Well, you see them. I don't see them, Lord. You see them. You know what's going on in their hearts, Lord. You know the situation, their life situation. You know where they're at right now. You know what's been holding them back, Lord. You know about their flaws. You don't care, Lord. You find beauty in them. You find value in them, God. God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that he would just open his mouth, Lord, and, and, and receive you, God, and just invite you in. Because if he believes what I'm saying, Lord, 
It's truth. He, he's going to be set free, God. So please, Lord. God, I pray that you would just, you would meet him, Lord. That you would hear his words, hear his cry, Lord. Even if he's not saying words, Lord. Hear his cry, Heavenly Father. Touch him, Lord Jesus. Bring a testimony of that man's life, Heavenly Father. Lord, you're going to break bondage, Lord. That's what you do, Lord. You set us free, God. You, you put your spirit inside of us. You live inside of us so that we have life, eternal life. That's what you promise. That's what your son said when he came. That's what this word says. It's not my words. It's the book. You promise us eternal life, reigning in your kingdom with, with you, God. So God, have your way tonight, Lord Jesus. Have your way tonight, Lord God. Move. Move in my brother and my sister's lives, Lord. Make yourself known, Lord Jesus. We're a bunch of imperfect rocks looking for the real rock, Lord. We love you, God, in your name. Amen. Um, Pastor Teresa, Dr. Car uh, Pastor Carter, Dr. Teresa, with your permission, if, if anybody prayed that prayer tonight, I, I want to get in touch with you. I, I want to speak to you. I love you. I want to hear your story. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know if it's possible. If you can email the school, you can call. We'll get in contact. This is not some screen. This is, this is like, dude, I'm just like you. I was where you were. I had unbelief. I, I was skeptic. I, I placed my faith in this right here. I want to talk to you. I want to hear your story. I love to talk. Thank you for listening. God bless. Praise God. We're going to go to the Lord's table tonight, and we're going to celebrate the victory that Jesus Christ won on the cross for us 2,000 years ago. When Jesus, the Son of God, went to the cross, he paid the price for every wrong thing that you've ever done so that in your imperfection, as we heard tonight, you can come to him and you can be forgiven. And the Bible promises that if, if you are in Christ or Christ is in you, you become a new creation. The old things in your life that governed you, that dominated you, that bound you, that imprisoned you, they all pass away and all things become new. Thank God for that. And you become a new creation in Christ Jesus. I wish you could be here in this sanctuary as, as many of us are every day because you'd see all the preachers that God is raising up now, like Jake tonight. By his own admission, came in with all the struggles and trials and difficulties, but you see what I see tonight. This is a pastor and a preacher in the making that God is raising him up. And it, it's truly amazing what God does. We just see it all the time. He sets us apart, teaches us who we are in Christ, empowers us by his Holy Spirit, and then sends us out just to tell others what he has done for us. It's no deeper than that. It's really that simple. And our message is this, what he has done for us, he can do for you and will do for you, not can. He will do for you what he has done for us. I love that. Never heard that concept before, Jake, that the house starts out ugly and is made beautiful, which is actually very true. <laughs> when, when we come in, we're a mess, all of us were. And uh, I don't know if we qualify as beautiful yet, but we're getting there. We're getting polished along the way and the rough edges are getting uh, sanded off. And God's fitting us together, as the scripture says, it was read tonight, into, into a holy house, a place where he dwells, a place of joy, a place of song. And that's what God will do for you tonight. He'll give you a new song. He'll give you new joy. He'll give you new strength. He'll give you new life. He'll give you new hope. He'll give you new words to speak, new, a new message that you've never had before. He'll give you a new heart for people that you never had. But God will do that in your life if you will just let him do that tonight. You have an opportunity, those are listening online tonight, to be a miracle. You have an opportunity to experience a miracle. If you will just open your heart and say, Jesus, will you come into my life and be my Lord and my Savior? Keep it simple. Don't make it complicated. You don't have to do any, anything else. Just open your heart. Your, your, your mouth, your heart being your inward, inward part of your life, and say, Lord, I really do want you as the cornerstone or the center part of my life. I want you to come in and build something in me that I can't possibly build in myself. And when you do that, God will come and he will be faithful to you. If you made that decision tonight, just text the word decided to 51,000. Decided 
to 51,000. We're going to sing one song, I assume, because you're all behind me with your instruments and microphones, and we're going to... Haven't they done a great job tonight, all this wonderful... And I, I know the, the people online, they want to see you more up on this platform, and we're going to be talking about that. Uh, there's so many testimonies here that need to be told, so many stories that need to be unveiled as it is for people who are coming in online to be able to see. God bless you. Well, give us a song, and then we're going to come back. If you have some juice, you have some bread at home, get it, or crackers or whatever, and we're going to celebrate communion together in just a moment. <laughs> 